Essendon have been on an absolute tear in the VFL lately and it's resulted in some young players coming out and getting a chance with the senior team. Archie Roberts wasn't just gifted a debut, it was his good VFL form that got him there and there are plenty of others doing really well at Resi's level. So like always, I'm going to go over the AFL listed guys and their last fortnight in the VFL. It's been a good period for the club. We've leapt up into 14th spot on the ladder after two very impressive wins, both weather affected. The first was a slog against Sandringham. We got over the line by 5 points, 67 to 62. Very close contest. Nothing close about it next game we smashed the Northern Bull Ants who were last on the ladder. It really started in the first quarter and we didn't let off from there. It was a 44 point win but we were pretty wasteful so it should have been more. And now let's get into the performances. There are 16 to talk about today. Elijah Sartas is in ripping form. He was great against Sandringham. He was really slick in the greasy conditions. His ground work was great and it shows from his 7 clearances and 15 contested possessions. He also led all the AFL listed players for score involvements. It was just an exceptional game in conditions that really suited him. He would have loved to see that weather radar the following week as well. 32 disposals, 6 clearances, and 9 score involvements against the Bull Ants. He's playing seriously good footy right now. All of our AFL listed midfielders are. That's what makes it so tough because we have such a deep engine room. So these guys just can't get games. They have to keep churning out these uh, A-plus performances in the VFL. Ben Hobbs, for example, he's starting to worry me a bit. I almost want him to play bad footy so clubs don't come knocking because surely they will. He's too promising to be playing in the VFL every week. Against Sandringham, he was great. He loved those conditions. He was very defensively minded. He was restricting their action out the front at times. Uh, he has become a bit of a tackling machine in the resis. Nine against Sandy and eight against the Bull Ants. Six clearances in both games as well. He's just playing his role to perfection. I really want to see him again before the year is done in the AFL, but I just don't know how to fit him in that AFL team unless you're playing him in a role that he isn't supposed to be playing. I thought he was... A plus, one of our very best against the Northern Bull Ants. Sam Wiedemann's a guy who's probably been given coaches a lot to think about these last few weeks. Uh, without Ridley, he's genuinely a chance to be playing AFL footy, I'd say. His form warrants it if we really do need him. He was strong against Sandringham. He wasn't perfect. He made some mistakes, but he had almost 10 interceptions, 7 marks, 20-odd touches. The following week was pretty much the same. Copy and paste, 17 interceptions across two games, 17 marks, over 40 disposals. Uh, that's all in the wet as well. He's playing really good footy right now. Will Setterfield is starting to take that title of the unlucky reserves player away from Nick Bryan who was of course promoted to the AFL. Uh, he would have seen the weather radar and known he was in for a big fortnight. His contested work has been just fantastic. 25 touches against Sandringham. Over half of them contested. Six clearances. Uh, 13 tackles. You could have argued he could have been upgraded to the AFL team then but his following game against the Bull Ants was just, it was a video game. 43 disposals. 8 clearances. Involved a lot more in open play which I think Scott will take confidence from. Those are two weeks where Setterfield has shown he can be a really rounded player. If a change was to come to that midfield dynamic. I'd say Setterfield has to be the first in line to get a chance back. He's been elite in this level and it's pretty much been that way ever since he was dropped down. Archie Perkins was back in the VFL for the first time uh, since I'm going to say early 2021 before he made his debut. I don't think he's been dropped really since then. He's been injured um, but I don't think he's been dropped. He was good though. He's played mostly as a high roaming half forward. He wasn't involved in the midfield as much as I thought he would be but he still went and got plenty of the ball. 26 touches, kicked a goal, handful of clearances as well when he was in the guts. You'd expect him to be playing this well at the level. I just hope he isn't rushed back into the AFL team soon. I hope he builds some confidence from good Resi's level performances first, not just one game. Todd Goldstein is still kicking. He was as dominant as you'll see Ruckman be in a game like that against the Bull Ants. He had 43 hitouts. The next best on the entire field was Vigo Vicentini with six. That's including both teams. The Bull Ants' best hitout ruck was John Jorgensen with three. He used to play for Essendon, by the way. Uh, they didn't really have a proper ruck, uh, and they had to go up against Goldstein, who's one of the best tap rucks of all time. Time. He was just a class above, really helped our midfield out, uh, can still play a part on game day if he's needed. Lewis Hayes has been really solid down back. He dipped in form a bit around the bye. He wasn't as dominant down back as he was early in the year, but he is back. He's played really well in both these games despite the slippery conditions. He didn't get lots of the ball against the Zebras, but I don't think he was really beaten in a one-on-one. -on -one. He just held his direct opponent down, whoever it was. Uh, it was probably his most complete performance from a pure defensive point of view. And then the following week, he came out and showed some of that aerial ability again. Nine intercepts, over 20 disposals. So if he moments by foot, but I just loved his attack on the ball in the air. Two really good weeks for Hayes for very different reasons. Nick Hind has been great since returning to the VFL. He was super energetic of halfback against Sandringham. He was playing with real confidence, injecting speed into the game. He was he was trying to be a leader to some of the younger boys as well, which I liked. You could see him calming everyone down when the game was getting frantic. That was good to see. He was yet again a big part of the outcome against the Bull Ants. 27 touches and a goal. I really do think he's a guy that could easily be brought back into the AFL at any stage.
stage. His form warrants it, and his versatility has been on show here as well. He's played halfback, wing, forward a bit. He's been everywhere. Peter Wright played his first VFL game in what has probably been years. He was dropped to the side after a bad run of form in the AFL. I thought he responded really well, though. He wasn't at his best. He made a couple of mistakes. Never really looked dominant, but definitely had a say on the game. He looked a class above without looking like an AFL star, if you get me. It wasn't a pick-me game, but he was good. Uh, three goals, two behinds, almost 20 touches, eight marks, 10 score involvements. He was one of the better players on the ground. I just feel like he could have really had a proper statement game and missed out on that opportunity. Uh, let's see what happens next week, I guess. Nick Bryan. Now, he uh, was obviously playing for in the Frio game. He's been fantastic all year, uh, but I actually think this... Sandringham game was a bit of a test for the Frio match in a way. He was fantastic against two really strong rucks. I mean strong as in physically strong. Tom Campbell and Max Heath are imposing figures and Brian was against them both all day on his own really. He had 18 touches, 10 clearances, 36 hitouts. It was the fact that he started slow and then managed to get on top of them both. He didn't back down. It was close to his most, uh, it wasn't close to his best or most dominant game, but it was close to his uh, most impressive. So it's no wonder he was given that AFL chance again. Davey Jr. Um, was another one added to the AFL side after one game in the fortnight. He wasn't that great against Sandringham. 10 touches, a handful of score involvements. It doesn't look like the game that gets you recalled, but I think it was his forward pressure, his pressure without the footy, that was really impactful. It's the type of pressure we've been lacking at AFL level. So I can see why Scott was quick to add him back in despite lacking a bit with ball in hand. He had six tackles, probably a bunch more that added pressure to an exit kick in D50. Even up the field, he was hot. I liked his game. He wasn't great, but I can see why he was brought back into the team from it. Lamont Lawal's had an interesting fortnight, a bit of a positional change. The first game was more defensive. It was a really quiet match. He started pushing higher up the field, but couldn't really impact play much. He was moved to a more forward 50 type role against the Bullets, though, a permanent forward 50 role. And I actually think despite the low numbers, he did okay. 11 touches, but seven were score involvements. Almost had a goal, but it was touched off his boot. Generally looked dangerous at times. Still needs to do more, I reckon. Not close to making the AFL side yet, but seeing him play in new roles is fun. Jaden Davey. He had such a promising start to this little block, uh, block of games. He was super energetic in the first. He had such a fast start. He was patchy but often involved. He kicked a nice crumbing goal. Almost used the win to perfection to nail a set shot as well. His pressure was better as well. I thought he would build into some nice form from that game. Unfortunately, he was just pretty much nowhere the following week against the Bull Ants. He ended the game with four disposals. I don't know if he was battling a knock or something, but I feel like I just didn't really see him for the match. He isn't on the injury list or anything, so I suspect it was either fitness or just a bad day at the office. Either way, he needs to put these games behind him as we close out the year. He's out of contract, and I'm sure four disposal matches are not giving the list managers uh, much inspiration for the future. Archie Roberts obviously made his debut against Fremantle on Sunday, and it's about bloody time. He couldn't really do much more than he already has done all year. Uh, that Sandringham game wasn't even his best, although he was pretty bloody good. 28 touches, 1 goal, 5 score involvements, 11 interceptions, I, I think it may have been his most rounded performance. Those stats tell the story. He was everywhere. Wing, halfback, hit the scoreboard. He just had to debut after that game, and he did. This was his bang-the-door-down moment. He's been one of our very best in the VFL all year. Him and Nick Bryan have been just so consistent. I think we've found a real play here for the future. Vigo Vicentini has unfortunately had to play alongside some pretty good teammates, so he hasn't really been given much responsibility in the ruck or anywhere. He was a bit of a passenger against Sandringham. It had been a few of those games, but that is common for young rucks picked up in the rookie draft. Very raw still. I liked his game against the Bull Ants though. I thought that was a lot better. I guess maybe attention was taken off him and onto Peter Wright or Todd Goldstein who were in the team. It allowed him to take some nice clunks on undersized opponents. He didn't do heaps, but I thought what he did, he did well. It's definitely a pass mark of a performance. Uh, the Sandringham game, not so much. And Tex Wanganin, it's been a good little period for him. He's been a lot better since moving to the back line. I think in terms of consistency, this little fortnight was probably his most well-rounded. I feel like we saw some corrections with his defensive game against Sandringham. He had seven interceptions against Sandringham most on ground level, which is um, uh, really where he impacts the game. I feel like he hasn't impacted matches this consistency uh, consistently ever in his career. Up forward, he was able to have one or two games a year where he just completely turned the match on its head. He doesn't do that down back, but he does play generally well each week. The issue is it's just a little bit too late in his in the year. He's now had two games or has two games left for the season. He'd have to get 50 odd touches and a bag of goals in those matches for the exit meetings to end with him getting a new contract. I think his delisting is announced in the first batch, unfortunately, but he at least has done the groundwork to continue his pursuit for a list spot in defense somewhere else. He should be uh, feeling good about the way he's improved in 2024. That is that. VFL recap done. A very fun one. The boys were playing good footy. Heaps are in good form. Some in career best form. Let me know what you think down below. Like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, go Bombers.